Obviously, uh, the third of the day, um, as it has been said before, we do see past minutes and consider two items. The two main items we're considering, although we're going to be a third, is the retirement of the Chief Executive. You have all read your papers, and you'll see that set out on pages 50 to 56, with recommendations on page 19, and obviously some recommendations that we'll be looking at presently. We're also looking at the retirement of the head of um, special services. That's set out on pages 37 to 58, with recommendations on page 40. And I think everybody here will probably know now that since this was um, uh, penned, the director of resources has also tendered the designation. And I should imagine we would want to look at that perhaps together with the, with the second item. So um, <clears throat> that's the uh, message, isn't it? That's where we are, and what we're here to do. We aren't um, asked in either case to actually make any of those decisions, uh, only to establish the appointment panels for the purpose of uh, getting on with it. So if we're all happy to uh, proceed, I think it would be appropriate to ask uh, Chris Myers to give us a clarifying. <laughs> Oh yes, are there any declarations? Doesn't lose all that I Yeah. Oh yes, I did mention that we had the minutes. I think you've all seen the minutes of the building voting. Yeah, well I was there at the so it's not going to be for that. Okay, so we get all the main things instead of just the uh thank you, Chair. And the first sort of certified is that the and head of base service, including training officer and electoral registration officer. Uh, for the um, purpose of brevity, I will refer to this post as chief executive from here on in, rather than uh, adding in the additional responsibilities of the role. Uh, the report outlines the issues of consideration by this committee, um, and they're detailed on page 15 in paragraph 2.3, where we work through setting up the appointments panel, determination of whether to use recruit consultants, determination of whether to use professional advisor for the panel, the salary for the role and job description and person specification and search process and timetable. And in dealing with those issues, there are a number of recommendations, and the recommendations are outlined in paragraph uh, 14.1. Um, so, Chair, my suggestion is that you take those recommendations for this particular post and um, step by step through the recommendations in paragraph 14.1. Okay, now, Jeff, you're the first recommendation. Thank you. It's a bit before we get to the recommendations, really. Um, and a couple of questions around, um, around because so again, 18, uh, page, page 18, lines 5, it talks about other options considered, and it says all options outlined in this report, uh, which actually doesn't um, cover some of the options I could think of. So, I think the question. The question really is how we thought as an option in those instances whether we need a chief executive at all, but Troika or uh, <coughs> if you like, of, um, of uh, um, strategic directors. So, do we need a chief executive? Um, is, it, is there any potential for showing a chief executive? So, if, if the decision is we need to have a Head of paid service has to be a person above the other three. Then, has there been any discussion about the potential for sharing a chief executive? I know at one time the administration was keen on sharing services, so I wonder whether this was in fact a, a perfect opportunity for us to, to think that through. So, uh, equally, <coughs> when we're talking about salary, I won't talk numbers on these things, but um, it talks about the salary as per this, so whether it's been 122 or 135. Uh, but of course, it doesn't talk about, so it doesn't even mention the job descriptions, to be honest, about the returning officer and the electoral registration officer. Now, as I understand it, and it might change, uh, that the, whoever the returning officer is um, and the electoral registration officer, there's a um, uh, what's the right word? Um, but there's certainly an allowance that is a fee. There we go. Uh, there's a fee that is paid to that particular individual, which uh, I don't know the amount, but it certainly might impact in terms of when we, 
you know, I noticed this one kindly what it was uh, what chief executives get paid for the North West. Um, but I don't know whether that included the uh, the eventual registration in terms of some fee. So in terms of the overall package that uh, people will be invited, or we'll be invited to be beside me within our own chief executive but prepared to listen to the arguments back to point. Uh, in terms of the salary arrangements, there's, um, there's certainly that fee should be put on. And I would suggest as well that the roles of, in terms of the job description, it would be, would be quite useful to see the utility office and electoral registration tasks listed in the job description, since so there seems to be a work. Just throw that in there before we get into the recommendation. Well, I'm just not, I'm starting the conversation. I, just, I was hoping to hear some discussion back and forwards about maybe a proposition might mm -hmm. emerge. Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, obviously, Jane, Jane Jeff has kind of talked
that section 151? Right, yes. Right. So, I was aware so of the, the, obviously that's not quite the same as the no. first item we were going to do. It will be more akin to the second item. Yes. Uh, I was aware of certain matters to do with that, but not aware of the opening situation. So, what I'm puzzled about, what I'm trying to look at is things in context. Uh, first of all, uh, people will probably take this wrong, but there they are. I'm not sure that the job that was set upon two and a half, two and a quarter years ago has actually been completed. So we're left a little bit up in the air with the unfinished business, unfinished play. So that tends to suggest there's a scale of problem to be addressed because Will's problems have been solved. So that leads me to say, well, we need somebody who can do it. And therefore, I understand the point about having enough time to do the job, especially with the difficulties that I see lower down the pecking order. Now, those difficulties lower down the pecking order I rehearsed many times at the improvement level, so I'm not going to rehearse here in public. Second thing that does strike me, though, more powerfully, is that we're not the size of organisation and workforce we were three years ago. Nor uh, have we got the structure that we had three years ago. When we had, as I understood it, embarked on a savings exercise at the top of the organisation, which was put on hold, while people, lower down, have had the pain and so on. And therefore, there's a lot of unfinished business and still work to be done. That leads me to ponder on the, the pressures on staff, no doubt. And to try and summarise things, we've been busy uh, urging people to leave and also degrading them. And from what I read in many emails from staff and what I read elsewhere, we've done very few degrading exercises of having more consultancy that mean the people that are there are able Therefore, I then think about the representation we've had over many years now about the difference between the top of the organisation and the people at the bottom. About what the difference is, what the number of times the top salary is compared to the bottom. And that leads me to suggest that we need to do a bit more work on this. And that's why I thought the terms of reference in Appendix 5 were comprehensive enough. Now, my version of Appendix 5, which is going to page 35, would be saying that because in that section we were there to mark it, the size and the scope of the chapter of the final right phrase, it's in clause 1 of Appendix 5. And I, am I reading from a public document? I think I have to check. Yes. So, that all equally could read the changing market, the reduced size, and um, reductions in the size of the workforce and revised downward grading of staff if it was to be fully comprehensive. We've been given figures for the councils in the northwest, and I'm not sure that's in the public domain as well. And I expect the northeast. And what it doesn't tell me is this, apart from reading about major I think was in the press. All these councils appointed people at a certain time, possibly when things were really good. And possibly, if you give us language, when things were on a roll. And salaries were on a roll. And they are in different times. So, um, and when it happens, whether we sort of wander around with our sort of hair shirt, like St. John the Baptist, and that old plots and things, that say, right, we can do it as modestly as possible. So I look at the, the prices of staff there and think, well, actually, compared to with Rochdale and St. Thomas and the uh, none of these, I don't know when they last did them. And I say they might have now, I'm assuming the chief executives, when they're on a certain level, if the organisation is reduced in size, they don't take an automatic cost of income. They stay on that because they're appointed on that. So I don't know what the other authorities are doing if they reduce their size. Can I just make a point? Yes, yes, I'm sorry, it's a long dissertation, but it's the things we're looking at. Long, it's, it's, long, it's, long, it's 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 long, it's
So if we point now with particular terms of reference as set out in Appendix 5, we need to adjust Appendix 5 to take account of the views expressed by members. Otherwise, we are considering Appendix 5 in a narrow definition. We'll not let go beyond the scope. Okay, anyone else? Phil, what's your view of that? I mean, I think all the points that Phil has raised, which are, you know, I think they are worth discussing, are, are covered in the in the terms of reference. You know, um, yes, the market has changed. I accept that in the last three, two, three years. Um, but the power can take a view on on that. I don't think the, the, the words in this in these in this terms of reference, which are pretty broad, actually preclude us discussing all of those issues that Phil has raised, which I think are. Reasonable points. Okay, um, Jeff, I'll let you come back on that. Yeah, that was just a full course in progress. Yeah, and, and, and just to begin, um, the points that, that Phil was making uh, in response to just to try to start a conversation with him, um, that, that actually what Phil has said comes to bear on this, that actually there are. Um, that the council has changed by its nature uh, since we last uh, went through. I mean, it seems we should make this a standing committee in some cases, but as uh, since we last went through the process of elect, I feel like to bring in the chief executive of the council has changed, and it's changed, and it's changing. So there was an issue that I, I'm prepared to accept the argument that there should be, um, there should be a a tweaker, uh, there should be a single person um, as a head of paid service. Um, well, I didn't hear a lot of that, the reasons why we also want uh, this, this should be something around the, the ultimate accountability in terms of, you know, people should be able to say if something's going wrong, that's the person that should be, should be accountable. But I still don't think that uh, stops us from looking for the opportunities to see if there is a a, the opportunity to share a chief executive. I, I, I would just say, and this is where the conversation starts, reading through this document, there's a, other options considered. There's, there's all options outlined in this report. Now, the conversation we've had would suggest that those options can be considered. Now, you know, I listen to you with um, great um, understanding. I'm always keen to hear what you have to say as an even council experience person who's been on many of these points, chief executives. Uh, and, and so that's that's interesting, that's good, and you are right, I probably do show a number of those points, but it, there's a difference between your view and my view and what's actually written down here about whether there were any uh, any protection whether there was any potential to actually do that or not. So I don't know whether, you know, uh, the outgoing chief executive Graham has looked at whether there are potential opportunities. I don't know whether Chris, in a role as HR and OT, has looked at whether there's any opportunities. In fact, it promised reports it doesn't even suggest whether anyone's really thought about it, looked at it, and said you could do it this way, or actually you shouldn't do it. So because that's not <coughs> considered. I, I, I do think that's a bit of a, a weakness in this report. And so um, if we are to progress, um, and I think we do need to, one of the things I would be suggesting is that we should have another item onto the terms of reference, um, which would be um, that, uh, that the panel receives support from the uh, current chief executive and the head of uh, HR and OT uh, on whether there is the opportunity to share a chief so that would be something that the panel would consider. <coughs> Clearly, at the end of the day, it would be a recommendation to council if there was such an option. But in terms of giving the amount of authority that's been delegated to this panel in order for it to recommend to council, again, I think it seems to be a, a reasonable change for that. I, mean, I, I, I just think we've got both of those officers here. I, I think it would be useful. Maybe I can ask the, the chief executive all his, his views on, I mean, you know, Graham, you've, you've worked in, in this role for two years, you've been Blackburn for a number of years, you, you know the, the sector very well, be interested in your your uh, take on, on the idea of 
share with you later. Chair, I'll, I'll say already, probably after this meeting, you probably be that I've been involved, but the normal tradition is that the retiring chief executive is not part of the appointment of his or her successor. So it might be once you've set up the appointments panel, and that will be the end of my role in, in this process, unless members simply ask me to do something, but normally it wouldn't be part of it beyond this meeting, but obviously clearly if you ask me, I will respond to the request. In terms of sharing our objectives, I think you are correct, I don't know of any authority of this size outside London that shares uh, a chief objective. Um, there are one two district councils uh, in the south, and there have been one two district councils in the northwest. I actually have done for a short period of time. I'm not sure anybody's doing it currently. And so, my personal view is given the challenges that we've always got, uh, I like all the projects I've got, the budget and other challenges, it would be a very, very tough task for anybody to where the council this size on this challenge and everybody else. So my personal advice is I think you should proceed the appointment of a, a full-time um, chief executive. The only thing I would like to say on terms of the appointments, and again the panel will make its own decisions on these things, but because I've got no interest in it in one sense, I would express a view that I think the current um, salary is too low to attract decent candidates across the north uh, west. Uh, as I say, there's nothing in for me. I, I wouldn't, um, I, it doesn't affect me anyway, but just my professional opinion is I'm not saying necessarily it should be towards the top end of this range. I wouldn't support that. I'm sure you would advise that. But I do think that there's going to be some increase in salary pay to my successor to attract their candidate. Okay, well, I think we can do the video. I think we should go on. Can I formally move that we should have the uh, request for? Um, a contract <coughs> uh, produced by the, uh, <coughs> the exactly but from the current chief executive and the head of HR and everything. Uh, good enough one year to uh, what's that? Uh, a paper to that panel for us to consider whether it's an option that's worth uh, further consideration. So I would formally move that that should be added to the. Um, I okay. just in terms of reference. Okay, let's take, put that to the vote. Those in favour? And those against? Yeah. So, 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 is amended to take account of the reduction in the size of the workforce and the revised grading of staff. But I don't know whether I have a second. What do you think that's we, we would we would second that in order to make sure we at least we have the conversation. Yeah. Okay, she was a foot. Please, I think there's a technical question. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a technical point around numbering staff. Um, we, in, the, in the remodeling proposals, um, it is um, something I'll say that, that's quite a difficult issue for staff. But in that case, it isn't a question of downgrading the suitable alternative roles and then new roles at a different level. So technically, staff are not downgraded. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
earlier, or oh, sorry, last week, that there would be a, a new staffing structure would be available by December. We talk about those savings. Is it really possible, uh, in order to, if we are to do this piece of work, uh, in terms of the terms of reference that have now been agreed, is the um, is it possible to do that without seeing what that new structure is? And Anne mentioned it will be available before December. Is there any chance this could be able to, to see that before? Chair, I don't think
infrastructure that she trained in, complete border structure, will achieve uh, that level of savings. I think that's quite a, a reasonable target. I'm confident that anybody coming forward will be able to achieve that level of savings. As Chris said, there are some individuals who are coming forward earlier that might allow you to make some savings in the and that's of that. Not a vast number, but a number that that will make a useful saving. But again, I'll echo what my view is back to back. But uh, as I did when I arrived, any each director should have the opportunity to put forward a structure for members to consider. And if you recall, I put forward a structure only in the July, when I actually didn't arrive until September. So any each director may well have an opportunity to speak to a, a, a range of people to gather information even before we start. Well, 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 I just think this is a complete red herring, this is an argument of the manager. We're here to agree the process for appointing a new chief executive. And Jeff is trying to divert us down avenues, which I think is inappropriate. But, you know, good, 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 good luck to him. So, um, I mean, I'm quite happy to, um, to, to move recommendations, Chair. And I think the only, the only one, one we need to just flesh out is to agree the appointment panel, which I think should be for. Four two one. Four two one. So I'll, I'll move that. Okay, that has been moved. Seconded. Seconded. Uh, those in favour. Those against. Three, four, three. Thank you. Very well. So, <coughs> if you want to be time with the head of special. Well, I'm just asking a question. Ask a question. In the spirit of being helpful. Uh, and just picking up what the current chief executive had to say um, about whether it was his intention, intention to be involved or otherwise. So, <coughs> following this point, I'm just conscious that this panel that has now been set up is going to consider the individual agents requiring various roles and pay for this kind of work. Um, so, I would hope that the current chief executive would be there to be advising the panel. I mean, he must do you know, what, what he sees fit, but certainly in this hands. But I would hope that we would be getting the benefit of the chief executive's advice with regards to what the interim arrangements may or may not be. I'm happy for the to give advice. I mean, he, he said that the convention is the chief executive doesn't take part in the the recruitment process once the appointments panel has been uh, uh, has been selected. So um, you know, I respect that that's the that's the uh, the standard practice in in local clubs in Spain. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, the thing is, because of the panel, if, if you ask me for advice, I will of course give it. But in, in terms of the appointment of my successor, it is very unusual yeah. for you to be what an appointment of successor. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the panel wants any other advice. I'm happy to give. Well, I can't. Um, I'll, I'll react to requests from the panel. Well, I'm presuming maybe we can help <coughs> this one. I'm sure we will require advice from the chief executive on what the interim arrangement should be uh, between now and whenever um, a replacement, <coughs> the replacement is, is found. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not wrong with yeah. Okay, and I think Cross is also going to comment as well. Uh, yes, before um, the uh, recommendations were uh, uh, finally agreed, um, I wanted to ask something with the committee's uh, permission. Um, the Jericho Committee has just outlined that the Director of Resources has, has announced a recommendation to leave. Um, and uh, rather than call it further in order to the Appointments Committee, again, with the committee's agreement, um, I'd like to propose that we amend the recommendations to include setting up an appointments panel for a Director of Resources. And uh, have an amendment to recommendations and to the terms of reference with the committee's agreement if you wish to, to consider those tonight. That's a good sense. I won't mind seeing the job description. Mm -hmm. come to the panel. The, the, uh, the part of the terms of reference is for the appointments panel to see the job description person's back and to amend and to agree final version of those. So we've got, this is, sorry for you, Chair, we've got a, well, we've got a, a, a fairly not a full uh, job description for the chief executive as we have at the moment. We've got a pretty full job description for the head of targeted services. So, 
uh, it, just in terms of consistency, if we haven't got one, if we haven't got one, we need to move on the stuff. The, 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 the intention was, within the terms of reference, is that the appointments panel agree that job description for the chief executive and paid service. With the amended recommendations, they will do the same for the direct of resources. Okay. So that seems pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Phil, did you want to come in? Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, so hang on. We might have a legal point. Yeah. Yeah. Just a uh, pick up that the reference to the director of resources will be included on city point. That's a small time. That was my other question. Yeah. Do, do appoint the section one? Because I know Deputy 141 officers are appointed by the Chief Executive yeah. William Meek, from what I can tell. So who appoints the 151? Who appoints the 151 officer? To the council of Council members. So, do we have one at the moment? You have uh, an acting 151 officer. So we continue to act while she has some progress. Right. Right. So, you, you, yes, so, just to it is a deputy section 151 officer. Yes, I'm still trying to get it. Yes, I'm all trying to get it. Um, well, I'm trying to follow up on what was said in the recent disagreement that occurred. Quite a disagreement. But I want to put things back in context, you see. If we're looking at an interim arrangement with somebody who may or may not be from the internal or maybe from outside, then whoever does that needs to have an idea, we need to have an idea, of where the fires are breaking out, which is my way of explaining that some people may go, as has been suggested, and therefore that puts particular pressures in particular areas, and therefore takes the eye off the ball of whoever it may be, no name, no factor, whatever, but we may be considering people who are busy fighting fires breaking out below deck underneath them, and we don't understand the pressures that those people face <coughs> when we're looking at interim matters. And therefore, it's about having attention fully on what needs to be done. On the ship of snakes, I yeah. think we're all. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I need to understand when we meet, what yes. might be happening below, and who might be going, so we can consider where the gaps are. You know, while I'm going along that corridor, bailing things out with my buckets, you know. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm sure. I'm sure all that will be. You'll be somewhere. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we'll do head of specialist services and we'll also do the sector direction of resources section 151. What is it? Action. Okay, that's two or three. So I can understand what it's doing the three. So what I'm saying is in this panel we make a recommendation. Yeah, yeah, so you're saying you'll be quite right. There will be three separate on the panels. So it's just that's quite the analogy of just trying to kill on the side. So on that case, can we agree? Yeah, can I move? I'll move the, the amended recommendation with the um, amended terms of reference that Phil moved, which we would like to Is there a second to agree? Second to so, no. agree. We agree. Those in favour? And those not in favour? Those still not in favour. Even though we think we need a section on the Thank you. 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 Thank you.